I am so excited you're here because I have put together a mega high-end home decor DIY video that I know you're gonna love. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. I don't know about y'all, but I am so excited to be here and I am so grateful for all of you that clicked on this video. Thank you for being patient with me. I know it's been a little bit, but my life is insanity right now, so I'm just doing the best I can. So for the first DIY, we're going to start off with this little house from Dollar Tree. And I start off by taking the hanger off the top. And all I did was take a pair of tweezers and I just pulled it from the inside and then pulled it out. Next, I heated up the sticker on the bottom and I pulled that sticker off. Now, we're going to be gluing this down to something. So in the end, it didn't really matter if the sticker was on or not. So you can decide rather you would like to remove yours. So once I had that sticker removed, and the easiest way to remove stickers is to heat it up with a blow dryer or a heat tool, and then it should just come off super easily. Next, I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and give the entire birdhouse a distress coat. When you get to the front of the birdhouse, you're going to want to be really careful because if you have too much paint on your brush, then the paint will kind of like pull up in that little design and you will have like little paint spots inside of the design. So if that doesn't bother you, then go ahead and load up your paintbrush. But for me personally, I do not like that look. So I made sure that all of the paint was evenly coated on the front. Now, as you can see here, I was actually on live doing this DIY. So if you guys do not have your notifications on, or if you don't get notifications, just unsubscribe, resubscribe, and then tap the bell and all, and it should notify you, not to say that it 100% will, but you can also text my number, the word, or the words, I should say, text crew, and you will get alerts for other things. However, I do always send out alerts for my videos. That way, if people do not get their notifications, then they get the notification through text. So um, I will leave that up on the screen for y'all. But I just take my chip brush from Amazon, always linked down in the description box, as well as in the pinned comment. All of the links that you guys need, all of the information that you need, always check the pinned comment and the description box because generally I put everything you guys need there. So my chip brush and my Dixie bell voodoo stain y'all know i love that stain and i just dry brush all the way around my birdhouse and then i take these little mini pots from dollar tree and i stain them with that same dixie bell voodoo stain now, if you guys are new here, hey, hi, how you doing? My name's Melissa, and I am so impatient. So to dry these and speed up the drying time, I just hold them in my hand and dry them with my blow dryer. Once they were completely dry, then I take another chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint, and I dry brush all of the mini pots. 
Next, I'm going to start off with the smaller one, and I fill up that entire inside with some hot glue, and then I take these florals from Dollar Tree, I cut them off of the pick, and then I arrange them inside of my pot to my liking. If you do not like the florals that I chose, you are more than welcome to choose your own florals, but I personally just loved the way that this looked, and while the hot glue was drying, I made sure to hold my flowers in place. For the next pot, originally I was just going to do them all this pink color, but I ultimately decided to mix the colors. So I used this pink, the white, and the yellow, and I just cut off some of the picks and then once again filled up the pot and arranged them inside. Now I could have made them like one color to the front one color to the back or whatever but i chose to like mix the colors all together i thought that that looked much better but once again this is totally personal preference if you don't like whatever i'm doing you can totally switch it up to your liking that is the beauty about diy i am just here for inspiration just because i do something one way doesn't mean that you have to do that you can make it yours make it yours make it suit your decor uh, change up the colors it's totally up to you now y'all know that i love anything miniature and i cannot get enough of these little mini pots of flowers let me know down in the comments do you guys like the florals that i chose or would you have chose something different so for the last and final pot i go ahead and also mix the yellow and the white i fill up the inside with hot glue once again and then I just arrange those in there. And once again, don't forget to hold these in place while the glue is drying. Because while I was doing this, I found that the flowers like to pop out of the pot. And you don't want them drying with them popping out. So once again, I just arrange them, hold them in place. And look how stinking cute. Oh my goodness. Again, I just cannot get enough of those. So I forgot to hit the record button, but I took this wood plaque from Dollar Tree and gave it a distress coat of my white Waverly chalk pen, chalk paint. <laughs> yeah, y'all, my chalk pen. <laughs> oh my goodness, it has been a day, you guys. But anyway, I take my mini chip brush or I guess it's not really mini, but to me it's mini because I have really big chip brushes. But I take my chip brush and some of that Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. And y'all know me, I love to dry brush. I love that rustic look. If you don't like it, just leave it out. But I dry brush all the way around the edges and then on the inside. And I always start with a really light hand and then layer as I go because you can always add more um, but you'd have to paint over it again to get rid of that so I just work in layers um, I also like turn my brush sideways I make a little swirls just to make it look more realistic next I take a light strand from Amazon y'all know that I love these lights always link down in my Amazon shop in the pinned comment as well as the description box and I just unravel the lights while they're on so I can make sure they work and I can see what I'm working with I drill a hole in the back of the birdhouse and then I feed those lights through and glue the battery pack on the back of the birdhouse Next, I leave the lights on just so I can kind of see, again, what I'm working with. I like to see the look as, like, if that makes sense. I like to see how it's going to look as I'm working. So I left the lights on. If you would like, you could turn them off. Totally up to you. But I take this moss from Dollar Tree and I just randomly put some hot glue on the roof and then randomly arrange that moss on the the top as well as you're going to see here in a minute that I do put some moss all the way around the birdhouse as well and my favorite hot glue to use 
is the Gorilla Glue Hot Glue. It just adheres so well and it just works much better than regular hot glue. So you can use whatever you have. That's totally fine. But I just wanted to mention, I get questions on which type of hot glue that I use. And in my years of experience, the Gorilla Hot Glue is by far the best. So once I had all of the moss glued down and I also did run the moss in the back of the birdhouse as well because I just didn't want it to kind of look funny if anybody could see the back. Um, but it probably wasn't necessary to put that there but I just personally like the back to look finished as well as the front. Once I was done with the moss, then I went ahead and I glued my little pots down to my liking. Once again, if you don't like the placement of where I put mine, you can totally switch this up. Once I had the little mini flower pots glued down, and I think I also might make more of these for like tiered trays and stuff. They're just so stinging cute. I can't get enough of them. But once I was done with that, then I took these little wood shapes from Dollar Tree. Y'all know how I feel. Dollar Tree is really stepping up their game and paying attention. And I really appreciate that because we're finding more items that we know and love so anyway I thought these were super cute it had all different types of spring little wood shapes in there so I took the wheelbarrow and the uh watering can <laughs> I couldn't think of what it was called I took the watering can and the wheelbarrow and I glue those to the front and then I also took these cute little bunnies that I'm also super impressed with I glue them together one a little bit taller than the other and I glue that down behind the left hand side flower pot once again, you guys can switch the placement up if you like, but I absolutely love the way that this turned out. My daughters are already trying to claim it. You guys know my kids love my projects, which I am, again, really grateful for. They make me feel so good, like I'm so special. <laughs> But I just love this project so much. I can't get enough of it. Let me know down in the comments what y'all think. Would you have switched this up or do you love it just the way it is? Hey you. Are you enjoying this video? I would love for you to become part of my crafty family by clicking that red subscribe button. Don't forget to share this out. It really helps my channel to grow. Let's jump back in. For DIY number two, now I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Dollar Tree stacking flower pots. Last year they had the big, the bigger ones, but this year they came out with a three pack of the tiny ones. I was so excited to find these. So I start off by removing the stickers and then I paint all three of them with my white Waverly chalk paint. And I found the easiest way to paint these after I did it um, the first time. Then I kind of got my rhythm down, but I held the inside where it kind of swerves and then I painted all the way around. And because this is like a textured plastic, it really took well to the chalk paint, or I should say the chalk paint took well to the pot. And so I gave it one good coat, let them dry really well, and then I went ahead and went in with a second coat. Now you can totally spray paint these, but I just prefer chalk paint. Um, and you can also do the inside as well, but I didn't feel that it was necessary because you're not gonna be able to see that. Next, I take my large chip brush that I get from Home Depot. I get them in a pack of 10 and they are like really good priced. So if I can find some on Amazon, I will link those for y'all. But I just take that Dixie Bell Voodoo stain and my big chip brush and I dry brush around all of these pots. Once again, if you do not like dry brushing, 
totally leave this step out. I always have to repeat myself because people like to skip through, which is totally fine. Um, even though it really does hurt my channel and hurt my videos when people skip through. Plus, you don't get all the information you need. I cannot tell you guys how many questions that I get from people that I answer inside the video and because they skip through, they don't get the information that they need. So I would advise you just to watch the videos start to finish because if you have questions, if you need any information, I can promise you that nine out of 10 questions that you may have, I usually answer that within the video. And then if there's a question that I don't answer, um, then obviously totally ask away. But it, it is a little bit frustrating when people skip through and then like they don't want to watch, but they just want me to answer questions. And it's just a little frustrating because I spend a lot of time creating these videos away from my family. And I spend a lot of time answering the questions within the videos so that I don't have to spend time answering comments of the questions. So anyway, um, I just wanted to mention that real quick. So once that was completely dry, then I went ahead and glued all the pots together. Underneath, you're going to see where they sit together. And then you can just put a bead of hot glue in that little divot and then put them on top of each other. And look how cute it is once it's all glued together already. Next, I'm going to take those same florals from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to arrange them all the way around these little stacking pots. Now, this was super duper late at night. I think this was probably two in the morning, you guys. Um, there's literally no way I'd be able to do what I do without my ketones. Not only did it help me lose 80 pounds, but exogenous ketones burn your fat for fuel, giving you better focus, better mood, better energy, better sleep, better digestion, better fat loss. There's literally so many benefits. And it's pretty much the keto diet in a drink. So with the keto diet, if you eat one morsel of food that you're not supposed to, it kicks your body out of ketosis, messing up all of your progress. With this product, you literally have food freedom, which is why I'm so passionate about it. And not only that, but... I created a business out of it. I earn money from it. So I earn money looking and feeling good. Plus, I have learned so much about social media, building multiple streams of income, being confident and being myself. And, you know, whoever doesn't like it doesn't like it. I used to care so much about what people thought about me. And I just like was not even myself because I was the version of me that I thought people would like. And I've just learned from my business that it's best to be yourself. People love you so much better. And that's just one of the zillion things that I've learned from my business. So rather you want to lose weight or feel healthy again, have more energy, or you want to build a business online and you want to learn how to monetize your social media, then definitely text my number, the word biz or ketones, and I got y'all. I would love for you to join the business with me. So once I had all of my little flowers arranged, then I took those little galvanized picks from Dollar Tree and I arranged them at the top. Now in the end, I ended up taking the water can off of the pick and setting that right next to it. It, and then I put the birdhouse right in the middle at the top. Now I knew I wanted to create a little sign, so I took this sign that I had left over from my Chalkatour tear tray kit, which I have a farmhouse Chalkatour kit coming for y'all. If y'all want to see that video, let me know down in the comments. I'm so excited about it. I'm also going to bring you guys an unboxing video. It's just like seven minutes, I think, but I bought a bunch of the new spring collection, so I would love to share that with y'all. If y'all want to see that, let me know as well. But I take this little sign from the tear tray kit and I paint the back white. And then I also dry it with my blow dryer because y'all know I'm so impatient. And then I take this rub on transfer from Dollar Tree and I cut out the farm fresh flowers. 
Next, I'm gonna take the rub on transfer off of the backing sheet and you wanna be really careful. I made this mistake. Be really careful not to touch that black lettering because it will transfer onto your finger. But I just had to cut it down a little bit shorter because it didn't fit right. And then I realized, oh crap, I messed up. But no big deal. I did not want to scrap this. And it's funny how intuition works because I ended up going to Dollar Tree this same night. And I picked up this Farm Fresh Flower Transfers transfer even though I had one out in my she shed if you guys did not know I have a gorgeous craft she shed that my husband completely finished the entire inside for me which I am in my kitchen right now because I just had a baby four months ago and breastfeeding has been a journey so I kind of moved my crafting inside for now but this next week if you guys want to see a video on me moving back to the shed plus I have more storage options let me know down in the comments I will be bringing you that video really really soon but once I had that rub on transfer transferred on all you have to do is just kind of scratch it with something to basically create friction and then it stays on whatever surface you want and once I pulled that up you want to make sure that you pull up that plastic really slow to make sure that your words or your letters are transferred on and then I just went over the parts that came off on my finger with a black sharpie I distressed it with my chip brush and my voodoo stain <laughs> I almost said Waverly wax but I used my Waverly stain and then that was it I just laid that little sign in front and look how gorgeous oh my god you guys this was sitting in my kitchen and I could not stop looking at it every time I came out in the kitchen and it caught my eye I just absolutely loved it it's so different and I am just so proud of this project so I cannot wait to hear what y'all think in the comments would you have switched switched up the florals or do you love it just the way it is? I'm always so curious to hear what other people's opinions are. Oh my goodness, you guys, I am so excited. Now, I started this DIY on live. I absolutely love DIYing for you guys, but live is a whole nother story. It's so fun. I get to interact with you guys, and I don't do it too often because, y'all, I have ADHD, and holy moly, I cannot walk and chew bubblegum. <laughs> Anybody else, if you guys if you guys can relate, type relate in the comments. But anyway, we're going to start off with these Dollar Tree canvases. These are the 8x10. And originally I started off with 4, but I realized that it wasn't enough. So all together I'm going to be using 6. And I start by taking them out of the plastic. And then I use my handy dandy staple puller to remove all of the staples. Now you can take these canvases off a number of different ways but my OCD doesn't like the look when the staples are still left when you use a utility knife and cut the canvas away so I took the time to pull all of my staples but that does not mean that you have to do that next once all of the frames are exposed I'm going to use a combination of wood glue and hot glue to glue all of these together now I take the wood glue from Dollar Tree y'all this wood glue is actually really really nice for a dollar 25 and it does last a good while so all I do was take my uh, wood glue and put a couple dabs and then I put my hot glue in between the wood glue and then glue all of those pieces together and the purpose of the wood glue and hot glue is that the wood glue is going to last and the hot glue is going to make sure that it sticks together pretty quickly once I was done gluing them all together then I'm going to use my clamps just to be on the safe side to make sure that they don't go anywhere Now, if y'all know anything about these Dollar Tree frames, 
or I should say the frame underneath the canvas, they are pretty cheap and they use like the worst wood that isn't sanded or anything, which makes sense. So I just sand that down smooth and then I'm gonna take my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain and I'm going to stain all of the pieces. Now the easiest way that I have found to do this, it is a little bit tricky getting in between all of the frames, but I just start off with the face of it. So what you can actually see and then I paint the frames all the way around and then once I get the majority of it painted then I'm going to stand it up and paint the pieces that I couldn't see. Also, make sure that you don't forget to paint your edge or stain your edge. Now, you guys use this just for inspiration. You can literally paint this frame whatever color you wish. Um, if you love that springy and colorful vibe, then you can paint this light pink, light blue, whatever. The possibilities are endless. I am just here for inspiration. Just because I do something one way does not mean that you have to do the same thing. Um, I just love to give you guys ideas. And I also love to see your recreations and the way that you guys do things because we're all just so different and we all have different eyes and we all love different stuff, right? So when you guys recreate my projects and you do it differently, I literally love it so much. So if you guys want to tag me, on Instagram. If you guys ever recreate my projects, I love to share. I love to show it. It makes my heart so happy to know that I am helping you guys make gorgeous home decor. So once I was done painting the frame, and of course y'all know I'm impatient, so I hit it with my blow dryer to dry. Then I'm going to take my big chip brush from Home Depot, dip it in my white Waverly chalk paint, and dab off the excess, and then I'm going to dry brush all the way around my frame as well as on the inside of my frames. Again, if you do not like dry brushing, then totally leave that step out. Next, I'm going to take chicken wire from Dollar Tree. Yes, you heard that right. I got that chicken wire from Dollar Tree. I actually ordered a, an entire case of this, um, and you're going to need two rolls for this. So I start by taking it out of the out of the package and then I'm going to lay it over the bottom half of my frame and I'm going to use my electric stapler to staple that in place. Now a couple tips and tricks for you guys. Be very careful when you are working with chicken wire. It is sharp when you go to cut away the excess and I always um, have a little bit excess on each side when I'm stapling that down. That way I can make sure that it's going to cover my frame completely because I have tried to like measure it out and cut it down first before and I just find it's much easier to leave it on the roll staple as much as you can and then cut the excess away and then once you cut away the excess you can kind of see the other spots that need something to keep it secured um, so I did just want to tell you guys that little um, trick because I have worked with this stuff for a while and there's just ways to make your life a little bit easier when working with items that are not so easy to work with. Once I cut the excess from the right hand side, I go ahead and I cut the excess from the left hand side and the bottom as well. Once I was done cutting away all of the excess, then I take my electric stapler. Y'all, I love this stapler. It's always linked down in the description box in my Amazon shop for you guys. And I just make sure to staple all of the rest of the pieces that were kind of like flapping, if you will. Um, I could tell that 
they just weren't secure very well. So I went ahead and secured them. And then I did the exact same thing for the second side using a new roll. Next, I'm going to take this piece of scrap wood that I had in my stash. And what we're going to do is measure it to fit the length of our little window frame. I'm going to cut that down with my DeWalt mini circular handheld saw. And I'm going to stain that piece once I sand down the splinters on the end from cutting it. Then I'm going to use my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Tobacco Road is the color. And I'm going to stain all of the sides and the front and back. Now, I love this Dixie Belle stain for so many different reasons. Not only is it water-based, it's not stinky, you can't smell it at all. Um, it dries very quickly and the application is so smooth and gorgeous. Once that was dry, then I dry brushed that piece as well. And I must have not hit the record button, but I did go ahead and glue that down to the bottom with a combination of wood glue and hot glue. Once my little shelf was glued down, then to secure my shelf to make sure that when I put stuff on this, it's not going to go anywhere. All I did was take a square dowel rod. I measure that out at the bottom. Now, originally I was going to make it come all the way to the end or the edge of my shelf, but I realized that it would probably look better if I made the pieces a little bit shorter. So once I measured it out and cut it with my miter shears, I did go ahead and cut those pieces a little bit smaller. Once I was done that, then I'm going to use that same combination of wood glue and hot glue. And I'm going to glue my dowel rods going from the back frame to the bottom of the shelf, making sure that both of the pieces are connected. I repeat that step two more times, once in the middle and the third time on the end. Once the glue dries, then I'm going to take that same stain. I'm going to stain all of the pieces underneath. And then once those dry, of course, y'all, y'all know that I am super impatient. So I did dry them with my blow dryer. And then I once again used my large chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint. And I dry brushed all of the pieces to make everything look cohesive. I'm going to take my last Dollar Tree grape vine wreath. Now this one was pretty full. Usually the Dollar Tree grape vine wreaths are like super duper skinny, but this was the only one in the pack that I could find that was like nice and full like this, but it's my last one. I'll have to find some on Amazon and link them for you guys because I absolutely love grape vine wreaths. There's just something so rustic about them that I just can't get enough. So anyway, I took nine bunches of um, Dollar Tree florals. I just love the look of these for spring. And I cut all of them away from the main pick. And then I'm going to alternate between styles. So I have the lavender picks. I have two different yellow ones and I just alternate. So I started with the lavender, then I went to the yellow, then I went to the different yellow. And the one style that was yellow does have these beautiful purple flowers. I'm not really too sure what they were, but they only had like one in each bunch. So I did um, do my best to arrange those as evenly as possible. And with these grapevine wreaths, what I like most about them is that it's super easy. You don't have to glue anything. You just kind of tuck the end of the pick in and it stays in place. Sometimes you have to use a little bit of hot glue, but you just go around and around until it is 
to your liking full as full or as not so full as you like it if you guys know what I mean let me know in the comments y'all I always like get so nervous about doing my voiceovers because I feel like I don't know I'm I feel like I'm the worst at explaining things but I do my best and that's what counts so anyway once I was done rearranging and arranging my floral the way that I like them around the wreath then I'm going to take this gorgeous spring ribbon that I got from Walmart. I'm going to make a very simple bow and then I'm going to tie that to the bottom of our wreath. I'm also going to lay it on our frame and just kind of get an idea of where I want the placing to be. I wasn't too sure if I wanted to use another piece of ribbon and hang it over the frame, but I ultimately decided I wasn't a big fan of the way that that looked. Um, if you like it, you can totally hang it that way, but I just liked it plain in the middle of this frame. So what I did was I laid it where I wanted it, then I lifted it up and put some hot glue under the spots that I knew that would touch the frame and then to double secure this I'm going to take this floral wire from Dollar Tree I'm going to kind of bend it up and then feed it through the chicken wire and I'm going to secure it at the top and the bottom Now once I secured that wreath down, then I just cut off the excess and I push that wire down. That way when it's against the wall, it won't scratch the wall or anything. I rearranged my bow because it was sitting flat. And then you guys are going to see how I made this little bunny sign in a minute. But I really didn't like the way that it looked on this wreath. I tried to shimmy it underneath to see if it looked best like behind the wreath or in front of the wreath. But I just was not a big fan. So I did use it in a different project, which literally took 2.5 seconds. <laughs> um, but I set that aside for a minute and I just just kind of held up different things to see what all I wanted to put on here. I felt that it was just still a little bit too plain. Now it looks absolutely gorgeous as is, but I knew that I wanted to add something a little extra. So I ultimately decided on this gorgeous bunny from Dollar Tree. It came on like a hanging sign. So I did just remove it from the sign. I then arranged it on my wreath the way that I liked. And then I just lift up small little pieces to to glue that bunny down to my wreath. I also made sure to hold my bunny down nice and evenly while the glue was drying because I was gluing to this greenery that has like this white powdery stuff on it. I knew that if I did not hold it down, then the bunny probably would have popped off. So I made sure that it was secure by holding it up and that was it, you guys. Look how stunning this is. I absolutely love all of the pieces together. Now, this frame would look gorgeous by itself without the wreath. So if you guys just want to make the shelf um, just so that way you have it all year round, then you can totally do that. But I absolutely love the way that this looks with the bunny and the wreath and everything combined. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Okay, sweet friends, for the last and final DIY, if you guys made it this far in the video, please leave me a green heart that lets me know that you're still here and still watching. Now, this is a bonus DIY because it's not spring. It's it's a farmhouse DIY, but I did do this on live, so I wanted to include it in this video. So I start off with this Christmas barn from Dollar Tree, and I take off that little roof frame. Then I flip it over and I'm going to remove those staples with my staple pull and sand that down smooth. Next, I'm going to give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. 
Once I was done covering it to my liking, of course, I hit it with my blow dryer, surprise, surprise. And then once it was completely dry, then I'm gonna use my big chip brush and my Voodoo Stain, actually this is antique wax. I'm gonna take my big chip brush and some antique wax. I'm going to dip my chip brush into the antique wax just a little bit on the end, and I'm going to dab off the excess and then dry brush. Now, I love to dry brush in layers because you can always add more, but to take it away, you have to paint over it again. So I like to dry brush in, in layers. I start off very light-handed and work from there. Once I was satisfied with my dry brushing, then I'm going to take that same antique wax and paint our little roof piece. Once my frame was completely covered and I made sure that it was completely dry, then I'm going to use my little chip brush that I get off Amazon. They're always linked in my Amazon shop down below. Then I'm going to dry brush all the way around that roof piece with my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm going to take this absolutely stunning transfer. This is... I was going to say March's Club Couture, but it's actually April's Club Couture transfer that is exclusive to Club Couture and designers. So if you guys want to learn how to get this transfer and how to get 40% off everything in the shop, then text my number at the end of the video, the word chalk, and I will get you guys all of that info. But I just make sure to um, fuzz my transfer. Now you don't have to do that. I was just kind of showing on live what fuzzing is, um, but I normally don't fuzz any of my transfers. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I never have issues. But anyway, I fuzz the transfer, laid that down onto my sign, and then I transfer that on with my black chalk paste. Now the trick to pulling these up is you want to pull in one direction so you don't want to take it from the corner and pull on an angle you want to pull the entire thing in one direction and then you want to also pull that nice and slow once that was completely dry then I went ahead and glued down my roof piece with some hot glue y'all know I'm OCD and I could see that the edge was showing so I did pop that off re-glue it Flip the sign around and then glue it backwards. That way I could see exactly where I was gluing it and I could glue it as perfect as possible. And literally, you guys, that quick and easy, you have absolutely stunning farmhouse decor. For the first DIY, we are going to take these wood hanging decor signs from Dollar Tree and I start by taking off the hangers and they're super easy to cut off. They're just jute hangers. Next, I'm going to take my jumbo popsicle sticks that I get from Walmart and I'm going to lay them out down the seams of each sign. So I'm going to lay the signs next to each other, obviously, and then I'm going to cut that second one so that way it will fit. And I'm also going to hold it up to another popsicle stick and cut another one down as well. That way I'm ready to go when I put my bead of hot glue down the seams. Now when you do this, you want to make sure you put your hot glue on and put your popsicle sticks on and before that hot glue dries, make sure that you push them together really nicely and evenly. Next I'm going to take my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and I'm going to fill those holes. Next, I'm going to take my unfinished wooden truck from Dollar Tree and I'm going to give that a good coat of my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain in Tobacco Road. That is the color, Tobacco Road. Y'all, I love this stuff. I am in no way affiliated with Dixie Belle. 
I just truly love the products and I leave out the tires but I do make sure to stain the hubcaps. I be sure to wipe off the excess stain and then I'm going to take a smaller brush. I'm going to take my ink Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to go ahead and paint those tires black. I'm then going to use that same brush and paint, and I'm going to paint the bed of the truck. Next, I'm gonna take my chip brush that I get from Amazon. I do have them linked down below for you guys in my Amazon shop. You'll see all of my links are now in one place and you can find my Amazon shop there. But I take my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all the way around all of the features of the truck. And then once I get done dry brushing the features, then I'm going to dry brush inside of the truck. I then dig in my stash and I found this little local market transfer. This is why I always tell you guys to grab the transfers when you see them if you like them because they do go out of stock as well as retire. This is an old retired transfer but I always stock up because um, I just love them so much and I know that I won't be able to find them again so I do grab a few at a time if at all possible um, and I go ahead and I transfer on that local market but I do not transfer on the circle around it. Next I'm going to sand down my lightweight spackling from the holes and then I'm going to give this sign a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Now, as I always tell you guys, I'm just here for inspiration. If you do not like the distressed look, you can totally give it a good coat of paint. But I personally like the distressed look, so that's why I give it a distressed coat, obviously. I then dry it with my blow dryer, because y'all know I'm super impatient. And then I'm going to take my bigger chip brush and my antique Waverly wax, and I'm going to start by lightly dry brushing the antique wax over my sign. I also go over those lines a little bit more heavy handed to make it look like it is three pieces of wood together even though it is I wanted to highlight those lines and then I just layer my dry brushing. Once my eyes were happy then I went ahead and drew a few little faux nail holes, screw holes, whatever you want to call it on either side with my pencil. Next, I'm going to pull out my transfers. This is another super, super old one. This transfer was actually from 2018. So I pull it from my stash. I cut it away from the other transfer. And then I lay it to the top of my sign and transfer all that wording on with my black chalk paste. When I peel back that transfer look how gorgeous this turned out now i like the distress look again i like that so i did let my paste dry a little bit before i pulled up my transfer but if you want your letters absolutely uh crisp then definitely pull that up right away Next, I go in my stash and I found this galvanized tag from Dollar Tree. It did come in a pack of two. So I just kind of hold that over the bed of my truck to see where I need to cut it. Can you guys guess what I'm about to make? If you can, let me know in the comments. So I am going to take this tag. I'm going to cut off the top of the tag. And then I'm going to bend my tag. So that way I have kind of like a little awning. 
Once I'm satisfied with the way it looks, I'm gonna hold it up over my truck and then I do cut the excess off of this tag sign. Now be very careful, you guys. I cut this with miter shears, or no, tin snips. I almost called them miter shears. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know I can't talk or get it right sometimes but we'll get it right someday right <laughs> anyway I take my tin snips my husband actually gave these to me if you did not know my sweet handy husband is a handyman and so he has all kinds of stuff I'm super super grateful for him but I just cut that sign down that way the edge is not hanging over too much I didn't like the way that it looked when it was just bent in half um, but once I cut the excess off then I'm gonna take a small dowel rod that I got from Dollar Tree I'm going to hold it up to the galvanized little awning and the back of my truck to see how big I needed the little stakes or um, the little pieces of wood to hold up the awning and then I cut that down to size. I also held that up to the other piece of my dowel and cut it to be completely even. I then sand my cut edges of my dowel rods smooth with my zip sander. Once again, you can find in my Amazon shop down below. Once I sanded them, then I took my chip brush and my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and I also stained my dowel rods. Next, I'm going to hot glue my truck down to my sign and I make sure to hold my little awning pieces up to the truck before I glue it down to make sure that I glue it in the right spot and then I hot glue my dowels to either side of the awning. Next, I'm gonna take these wooden little mini flower pots from Dollar Tree. I absolutely love these so much. You can use them for so many different things. And I wanted to cut these in half, so I tried to use my husband's Dremel, but it just wasn't working. I think I need to get a better wood bit. I'm not really too sure. But in order to cut these in half, it was a little bit tricky, but I just took my tin snips and cut on either side of the pot. Now, it did cut in several different pieces, but it didn't really bother me because I ended up gluing them back together. It was no big deal. So I just snipped on either side. It did crack the wood, and then I also had to take my tin snips, and these little pots have like a thicker piece of wood at the bottom base it's kind of like a cork it's not a cork but that's what it reminded me of so I just kind of cut into that and it snapped the pots the rest of the way now obviously like I said it did snap in several different pieces but I was able to glue them together with no problem I tried to do this with just wood glue, but it definitely worked much better with a bead of wood glue as well as some hot glue. The wood glue is going to make sure that it stays together and stays together really nicely for good, and the hot glue is going to hold it very quickly. Once I had all of my pots back together, and I did put them together in half, obviously, that was the point of cutting them, um, but then I go ahead and stain all of my little uh, half pots with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain, and I didn't like how dark it was without wiping off the excess, so I do wipe the excess stain off. I'm going to use my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint, and I'm going to dry brush all of my half pots. Next, I'm going to dry brush the little pieces to the awning as well. I then glue down my awning to the back of the truck Before I glue my pots down, I'm going to lay them in the back of my truck to see exactly where I want them. 
Then I'm going to take these florals from Dollar Tree and I just cut them apart. If you guys did not see my first spring DIY video, I did use these same florals and these same pots and I couldn't get enough of it so I knew that I wanted to use the same combination. And then once I was satisfied with the placement of my pots, I go ahead and glue them down with my hot glue. I then arrange all my little flowers into the pots before I glue them down as well. And then once I was satisfied with the placement, I go ahead and glue those in the pots. And I just kind of, you know, figure it out as I go. Once I had them in there and I like I kept holding up the sign and looking at it and then adding more and more flowers as I went because I wanted my pots to be nice and full. Um, so you just do the same thing and do it until your eyes are happy. And to finish this absolutely stunning sign, I'm going to take my antique wax and my chip brush and I'm just going to dab some of that wax over the awning to make it look old and rustic. Once again, if you do not like this look, totally leave it out but you guys I cannot get over how gorgeous this sign turned out I am so excited to hear what you guys think of DIY number one down in the comments below DIY number two, I'm going to take this wreath that I got from Walmart. I previously used this wreath in a different video and I actually thought that I got it from Dollar Tree because it was, I have my grapevine wreaths in a different spot. The ones I bought from Walmart were in a different spot and for some reason I had the last one in the spot where I had my Dollar Tree wreaths at. So for some reason I thought it was Dollar Tree's. It, I was wondering, it looked kind of thick. So after the fact, I realized that I was totally wrong, but no big deal. I did get these from Walmart. Um, and I will also leave some down in my Amazon shop for you as well, because I also just ordered more because this is my absolute last one. So I got these bunches of florals from Walmart as well. And I just started by separating all of the different floral picks in a pile. That way I could evenly distribute them around my wreath. So I start with the most bulky greenery first. And I just arrange that around my wreath. And then in the empty spots, I add the different greenery. Once I was satisfied with the way the green florals looked, then I'm going to take these gorgeous little pink flowers. I'm going to take the smaller ones off the pick because this had bigger bunches as well as smaller bunches. So I add the smaller bunches randomly and evenly, if you will, around the wreath. And then I also took these gorgeous blue florals from Dollar Tree. I cut those apart and added them to the smaller um, pink florals. And then I also add the bigger pink florals. And you guys, look how freaking stunning this turned out. For a spring wreath, I just cannot get over how gorgeous this is. And this is why I tell you guys to step outside of your comfort zone because this is not a wreath that I normally would put together. So anyway, moving on to the next step, I'm going to take this tag sign from Dollar Tree, this unfinished wood tag sign that we used in the beginning of the video. 
I'm also going to take my blush transfer and lay that over the sign. I'm going to mark it and then cut that down with my utility knife. And it's super easy to do. All you have to do is just score it a few times, bend it, and then cut it the rest of the way from the back, and then sand down the edges smooth. Next, I'm going to give this a distress coat. Surprise, surprise. Once again, all the way around my sign as well as the front of the sign. Again, if you don't like it, just give it a good coat of paint. Now, again, you guys, uh, as I always tell you, I'm just here for inspiration. If you like, you can totally switch up the colors. You can switch up the greenery or the florals. It's totally up to you. Once my paint was completely dry, of course I hit it with my blow dryer because y'all know I am so impatient. I then take my large chip brush and my antique wax and I once again distress this all the way around the sign. I also like to take the side of my brush and make little faux knots as well to make it look more realistic. I then lay my blush transfer over my sign, making sure to smooth it out really well. That way it doesn't bleed. And then I transfer on the border and the word blessed with my black chalk paste. And then the greenery, I transfer that on with my pesto chalk paste. Now, if you guys have never worked with paste before, I highly recommend it. Not only is it so satisfying and fun, but y'all, one jar of paste lasts forever because you only need a tiny tiny bit to use with your transfers and then you're going to squeegee off the excess back into your jar so when I tell you you don't use much trust me these jars last forever so once I peel back that transfer I reveal this absolutely stunning image and sign and then I'm going to lay it down on my wreath of course, I figure out the placement before I attach it. I wasn't too sure if I wanted it on the side or directly across, and I did ultimately decide to put it right in the middle, and then I just secured it with some hot glue. I then took this ribbon that I got back at fall time and I just create a very simple bow. All you have to do is cut a piece. You want to like fold it kind of like a cancer ribbon and then you're going to pinch it in the middle and tie it and cut off the excess jute. Next I'm just going to cut the end smooth and hot glue that down to the bottom. That was it for this DIY you guys. Look how gorgeous this spring farmhouse wreath turned out. I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to display it in my new home for years to come. Let me know down in the comments, would you guys have changed anything up about this wreath or do you love it just the way it is? For DIY number three, I'm going to start off with a scrap piece of canvas that I got from the canvases that I took apart for my last couple previous DIYs. If you guys missed those, I will leave it in the cards in the right hand corner. But I'm just going to take these little signs that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to just trace that onto my canvas. I'm then going to cut that out and also make three more of the same size. Next, of course, I'm going to dry brush all of these little pieces with my Waverly Antique Wax. I just wanted these to look old and weathered and rustic. Once again, I know I sound like a broken record. If you don't like that, then you can skip this step. Once I was done with the first one, then I repeat that step for all three of the remaining canvases. With that same chip brush and my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain, I'm going to dry brush all the way around these frames. Now these were already like distressed, 
but I just felt the need to distress it even more. If you guys have been around, y'all know I love distressing. So I take those remaining pots that we used in the first DIY and on two of the canvases, I'm going to put one of the bigger pots on one canvas and then the two smaller ones on one and then I'm also going to take this greenery that I had in my stash I'm going to cut it down to size of course until my eyes were happy and I put those little greenery pieces in my pots And once again, you guys, this is a really easy project. Do not get intimidated. I know a lot of you guys get intimidated by DIY because you think you can't do it. You think it's going to turn out ugly. And trust me, you guys, you're a lot stronger and more crafty than you think. Crafting is definitely a learned skill and you can never get better if you don't try. So start off with little easy projects like this and work your way up to bigger projects. I know in my heart that you guys can do anything you set your mind to because I used to always tell myself the same thing. And then once I started to do things, I figured out, hey, like, wow, I'm actually pretty good at this. So step outside of your comfort zone like I do and you'd be amazed at what you can do. So anyway, I put more of those little pink florals in my little mini pots and set those aside. And then I take this butterfly transfer and transfer that on to the third canvas with my black paste. I blow dry that with my blow dryer to make sure it's nice and dry. And then I transfer on this number 34 doing the ombre effect with my gold paste and black paste. Once again, I make sure that's really, really dry and look how gorgeous this is. So once again, I set that aside and for the last one, I'm going to take this little design and transfer that on again with the ombre effect gold and black. And then once that was completely dry, you're going to see here in a minute that I do layer that with a butterfly using my black paste. And look here, you guys. This is why I freaking love Chalk Couture so much. I love it with my whole heart and soul. Not only is it so easy and quick to use, you guys, I don't have time to use a Cricut. I don't have time to trace things on and then go over it with a paint pen. I wish I did because trust me, I would save a lot of money. But I just don't have that kind of time and this looks so professional and high-end that I just cannot get enough of it. My love language is chalk couture and ketones if you did not know. <laughs> If you did not know, ketones help me lose 80 pounds of pure fat, you guys. I can't even believe that two years later, I feel and look as amazing as I do. And now, I help you guys lose weight and feel good again, too. Or if you just need better energy, focus, and mood, then ketones are for literally everybody. So just reach out to me, text my number, um, and I would love to help you either earn money sharing your story and helping other people to do the same thing or just to feel good again. So text my number, the word biz or ketones and let me help you. I literally love it so much. But anyway, all I did was glue my frames together and then I added my little canvases to the little hangers. And you guys, how stunning is this little faux vase? I don't know what you want to call it, but I absolutely love the way that this turned out. This was another one of those projects that I had no idea where I was going with it. I just pulled out these picture frames and kind of figured it out as I went along but I absolutely love the end result and I cannot wait to hear which DIY in today's video was your favorite down in the comment section below. The cat 
for the last and final DIY. If you guys are still here, you're the real OGs. Leave me a butterfly emoji down in the comments so I know that you guys are still around. So anyway, I'm going to take this Christmas sign that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut off the Santa hat as well as pull off the little details on the front. And then I'm going to sand the edge down smooth once I cut it down. And I'm going to give it a distress coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm going to dry it really well with my blow dryer because, again, I'm so impatient. Y'all, when I'm DIYing and I'm on a roll, I just want to go to the next step. I ain't got time to be watching paint dry. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't got time for that. So anyway, once it was completely dry, then once again, I'm going to use the ombre effect with my gold at the top and black at the bottom. Now the trick to get really nice, crisp images when you're chalking is to make sure your paste is really stirred up. You're going to chalk with nice, even um, pressure and then when you pull up your transfer you want to pull it up nice and slow to reveal that absolutely stunning image so I'm going to set that aside and then you guys look how cool this is so I take my butterfly that was in the same transfer and I will leave all of the chalk items that I used down below in the comments um, in the pinned comment as well as the description box and I'm going to take a black piece of cardstock I'm going to fuzz my transfer really well and then I'm going to transfer that butterfly on with the gold in the middle my rose gold next and then white on the edges and look how stunning this looks on this black cardstock so once that was completely dry then I'm going to take my Cricut scissors because they're really really sharp and I can get in all those little details and I'm going to cut my butterfly um, right on the edges and look how stunning oh my god I just can't I can't get enough of it I love it and it, once again you guys if I didn't want to make spring decor, I literally would make farmhouse decor every single video. I mean, let me know in the comments. Are you guys for that or against that? <laughs> but, you know, I try to appeal to more people. And I know farmhouse is not everybody's forte. So, you got to switch it up every once in a while. So, anyway, the point is I'm, I'm always shocked when I step outside of my comfort zone. But anyway, I just kind of manipulate my butterfly's wings to look like it's flying. And then I wrap some jute around the top randomly. And I hot glue that to start and then cut it and hot glue it once again once I was satisfied with the way that the jute looked. And then y'all know I'm impatient, so I skipped the dry brushing. I totally forgot. I got a little ahead of myself. I should have did that before the jute, but hey, you live and you learn, right? So I dry brush at the top and the bottom and through the sign, and then I glue my butterfly down at the bottom. Now, I had these little letters, these... Um, scrabble letters from Dollar Tree and I was going to put like live on there. I also was thinking about putting breathe but I didn't have enough letters so I just left it plain. Let me know in the comments. Would you guys have put the um, scrabble letters or do you love it just the way it is? To start off DIY number one, if you guys remember from the other day, we basically did this exact same thing, except this time I'm going to take 
four canvases from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take them out of the plastic and then I'm going to use my handy dandy staple pull that I got from Walmart to pull out all of the staples. Now if you don't have a staple pull all you need to use is like a screwdriver or something that you can get up under all of those staples. Um, it's really really hard without a staple pull. I'm not gonna lie. You can also cut them around the staples. Now I personally don't like that either just because it just looks funny in the back and then you have to use like needle nose pliers to pull that canvas away from the staples. So honestly you can do it whatever way you're comfortable with but I definitely definitely recommend to invest in a nice staple pull. Next I'm going to sand down the frames now this one i don't know what was on it you guys you know the frames that are in the canvases from dollar tree are not the best but they're not the worst either so i'm not complaining but it had this green dye on it so i made sure to sand that smooth and then i glued all of them together with some dollar tree wood glue and a dab of hot glue in between the wood glue now the wood glue is going to make sure that the hold lasts and the hot glue is going to make sure that it sticks together super quick. Now again, these frames are super cheap and they're not completely square. So in order to hold them together really nicely and evenly, I do use some clamps. Next, I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain and I like to pour it into a little container and then use it that way if I am not staining like a bigger piece where I can just um, squirt some of it onto the project. So I did just pour some into a Dollar Tree container and then I used a regular paintbrush to just paint on that stain. Now I love this Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain for many reasons. I am not sponsored by them. I just love the product. It's water-based. It doesn't stink. It dries down really quickly and it just looks absolutely gorgeous. So once I was done staining all of the entire inside of the frame I make sure to stain the outside of the frame as well and I know a lot of you guys like to finish the backs of your project but because I knew this was going to be towards the wall I did not worry about the back but you can if you want so you guys I would not be able to do what I do without without my ketones right there that you've seen was a healthy Red Bull if you guys drink five hour energies or Red Bulls please reach out to me let me help you drink something that's going to do the exact same thing actually give you way more benefits and it's really good for you it actually burns your fat for fuel giving you better focus, better mood, better muscle preservation, better sleep, better digestion, better fat loss. If you don't need to lose weight, then you can definitely use this as well. It is not even a fat loss product. It was actually formulated for the brain. So reach out to me. I would love to chat. I also made it into a business to where now you guys, I make crazy money just sharing my story and sharing how amazing that product is so anyway once it was stained then y'all know I love dry brushing so I did go ahead and dry brush some of my white Waverly chalk paint with my big chip brush all the way around each frame now you guys have seen in that last haul that I did that blue and white wall tiles it was the first time that I saw those wall tiles um, but I just personally like the silver ones better so that I could paint it um, but if you guys like that white and blue look I thought that that looked really gorgeous it just doesn't fit my decor so I did go with the silver ones and I did use four I just put it to the back of one of the frames and then I I used a sharpie to put four little dots in the corners and then I cut a little bit further than the dots that way I had something to glue to the back once I was done cutting the first one then I'm going to measure like trace out the other ones and cut all four of those down as well and make sure that you do not throw away the scraps because I'm about to show you some 
freaking phenomenal projects with the scraps you guys and I had no idea like what I was doing I honestly had other projects in mind and when I was doing the last videos frame um the spring DIY with the chicken wire after I put the chicken wire on I had this idea and I was like shoot that would have been so cute but I had already stapled them down so that's what I was teasing in the last video that I had another idea and it just dawned on me when I was doing the last project so if you guys did not see that I will leave that linked in the pinned comment as well as the description as well Ah, y'all know I can't talk as well as the description box below for y'all um, I'll also leave it at the end of the video so if you didn't catch it definitely check it out it's a good one um, but once I had all of my pieces cut out and then I'm going to give them two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint now these are a little bit tricky to paint because they have those gorgeous raised details when you paint it on you want to brush it and then make sure that you're going in a swirling motion. That way you can make sure that you cover the entire piece. If not, you are gonna have spots where the paint doesn't touch it and you're gonna be able to see that silver through there. So I made sure to really coat these good and I did dry in between coats. Now for the second coat, um, you can either dab it on or you can swirl it. It's totally up to you. Um, but in order to make sure that you don't have streaks and I don't know, it just looked wonky when I tried to brush it. So just make sure that you're dabbing it or doing a swirling motion when painting these. So I once again hit it with my blow dryer because y'all know, y'all know I'm super impatient. And then once they were completely dry, then I used that same chip brush. Now I get these chip brushes from Home Depot, if you were wondering. Um, I also have some chip brushes linked in my Amazon shop down in the description as well as the pin comment. And I just dab my chip brush into my antique Waverly wax. I dab off the excess and then I light handedly dry brush over all these details. Now I go in one direction and then I go in another direction layering that wax. And you guys look how gorgeous this is. This is my favorite part bringing out all of those stunning farmhousey details. I literally am loving this project already. Once I was satisfied with my dry brushing, again, I do layers. So sometimes I go a little bit more heavy handed. Sometimes I do layers, but with this, I definitely went in layers. I went light handed and then I accidentally went a little bit too heavy handed on one of them. And I was like, oh shoot, I really like that look. But as you can see here with farmhouse decor, it's not perfect. So I was a little bit more heavy handed in some spots and more more light handed in other spots again I just personally like that look but if you don't like the look of dry brushing then totally skip this step but I did use some antique gold rub and buff to go over those details and you guys this sheen that it gives it is just so gorgeous I absolutely love it so once I was done doing the rub and buff and my dry brushing I made sure they were completely dry and then I flipped my frame over I ran a bead of hot glue as close as I could get to the like inside of the opening of the frame on the back and then I laid my wall tiles down to secure them. Last but not least, I had this wreath in my stash from a while ago when I did my bedroom decor makeover video if you guys did not see that I can link that in the cards in the right hand corner but I 
had these reads and they were a little bit too small so I kept them in my stash and it was absolutely perfect for the middle of this project so the last project from last week I just took the wreath off of that and sat this right on that shelf and you guys I absolutely love how this turned out I can't wait to hear what you guys think down in the comments Okay, you guys you could do this project with your eyes closed now I just took that scrap piece of that wall tile and y'all this is a cheese jar I love to save stuff like this I love the detail at the bottom so I just washed the jar really well and let it dry and then once it was dry I took this wall tile I measured out a piece to go around the top portion that was plain kind of like where the sticker went and then once I had it cut down to size, then I took the plastic off of the back of the wall tile and I just glue that down. Now it didn't want to stick very well together. So I did put just a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it stayed down really nicely. Next, I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give this two really good coats of paint. Now we're going to be using this for a vase, so I wasn't going to be putting the lid back on or anything. So I did just make sure to go ahead and paint the neck and the top of this jar as well. Of course, I hit it with my blow dryer in between coats. And then once both coats were completely dry, then once again, surprise, surprise, I'm going to use my chip brush and my antique wax to dry brush. Okay, y'all, my little buddy is hungry, so if you guys hear him, no, that's not your kid or your dog or cat. It's my kid. So, anyway, um, once the dry brushing was completely dry, then once again, I take my rub and buff and I dry brush all the way around this jar. If you guys have not noticed yet, I love for things to match. I love to make like sets of things and things that look really nice together. I don't know. My brain just like works that way. Let me know down in the comments. Do you guys DIY like that or is it just me? So once the rub and buff was completely dry, then to kind of cover up the edges of this wall tile, I didn't like the way that it looked. So I just put a dab of hot glue in the back of the jar and I wrapped that jute around the bottom until I was happy with the way that it looked. I then repeated those same steps at the top of the jar once again to cover up those edges. And that was it for DIY number two. Look how absolutely stunning this turned out. Now, are you guys digging the two different designs, the wall tile and then the design at the bottom, or would you have left the wall tile out altogether? Let me know. I'm always curious to hear what you guys think down in the comments section below. Okay, you guys, DIY number three. As always, I can't ever choose a favorite, but y'all, this project is so good. Now, I originally made a lantern pretty, pretty close to this a while back. Um, several people have made it without giving me credit, which is fine, but I am the original person who 
made this lantern to begin with, but I wanted to put a spin on it. So I took these two little trays or square boxes from Dollar Tree. I don't know what you want to call them. And I measured out a square dowel and cut it down into four pieces. Next, I'm going to remove the label holders off the front of these box and surprise there were two on one which was pretty cool i just put one actually i put two to the side we only end up using one and then once i removed the labels i'm going to take those scrap pieces of the wall tiles and i'm going to just lay that on the front of my box and then i'm going to measure it out mark it with my sharpie now I get these Sharpies from Home Depot because they will literally write through anything. Uh, water, they're made for construction. So if you're on a construction site and like your piece of wood is wet or whatever the case may be, sawdust, they are made to withstand any type of material so you can write on it no matter what if you guys know anything about sharpies they don't work with sawdust they don't work with um you know dampness so i really like these for that if you ever see them in home depot definitely grab some but anyway um once i measured out the first side then i'm going to take the plastic off the back and I'm going to glue that down. Now, because we cut this up and it is not connected around the edges, you're gonna have to glue down the wall tile to the sticky piece or else your wall tile will just flap in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want that for high-end decor so make sure that you're gluing that you don't want to uh, display that without it being glued so once I glued down the first piece then of course I measured the second piece I glued that down and then I was like Melissa what are you doing girl why did you not measure out seven more pieces <laughs> and make your life 10 times easier so I kept like holding it up to my box and measuring it and then finally I was like duh girl like what are you doing so once I realized it then I went ahead measured out all of my pieces cut them down and then on the second one I got even smarter and I glued my pieces to the sticky piece before I even pulled it off of the plastic again making my life easier. Now I love to show y'all how imperfect I am. I cannot cut a straight line to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> so some of my pieces did hang over the edges and were a little bit wonky so once I had them on my box then I just trimmed down the edges as best as I could. Now once both of my boxes were covered with the wall tiles now we're going to make the top of the lantern so i take this square wooden piece from dollar tree i also had this little wooden sign from michael's that i got for 99 cents and i start by taking the sticker off i also tried to pull the jute hanger off but it it did not want to work so i took the hanger off of the back i unscrewed it and then i took my staple pull and i just removed the staples as well as the jute hanger Now, before you ever glue anything, make sure that you put it together and see how it looks. That way, if you don't like it, you can always change the piece up, try something different. But I absolutely loved the way that this looked. So I went ahead, I glued down the box from Michael's first, and then I went ahead and glued down the wooden plaque from Dollar Tree on top of that. Now, once again, I am very imperfect. So I cut all of these dowels down and I just realized that they were too short. I didn't have any more dowels that size. So I just went ahead and cut down the dowels that I did have to size. I just 
put it inside of my lantern. Now remember that about an inch of this is going to be covered because you're going to lay your box on top. So I just measured them out, cut them down, and I had four pieces all together, obviously, to go in each corner. And then I hot glued each piece into the corner. And once that hot glue was done, was dry, yeah, once it was done, y'all, <laughs> once it was dried, then I put some hot glue on top of the dowel rods and I arranged my top box right on top. Next, I'm going to flip it over, and actually, I lied. First, I'm going to take this other piece of square. Yeah, other piece of square. You guys, it's late. This video, I'm trying to get this video out to y'all, so please bear with me. I took this square piece of wood from Dollar Tree. I took the hanger and the sticker off, and then I glued that to the top. Now, this just makes a little cute design at the top of your lantern. And then I'm going to give it two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint once again. Originally, I was going to stain my dowel rods. And I think that would actually look really, really beautiful. So if you guys end up doing that, let me know. But in the end, I did go ahead and I painted my dowel rods. Now, these are kind of tricky. So make sure you are continuing to turn over your lantern and painting as you go because the sides you can't see sometimes I miss them so make sure that you flip it around make sure that you have everything nice and coated and then I go ahead and give the top two good coats as well Once again, after the first coat dries, y'all know I'm super impatient, so I use my blow dryer to get that nice and dry so that I can move on to the next step. But you want to make sure that you're doing a dabbing or a swirling motion to cover that completely. I also painted the bottom box, and I wish I would have done both. I don't know why I didn't, you guys. I wasn't thinking too well. But I would definitely paint both sides. You can even paint the boxes on the insides before you put this all together just to make your life a little bit easier. But as I always say, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I will know for next time. So once again, once my white paint was completely dry, then I did the same thing by flipping it over and dry brushing my antique wax all the way around all of those gorgeous details as well as the top of my lantern and then once everything was dry brushed including the dowel rods then I'm going to glue one yeah I'm gonna glue I'm gonna screw hey that rhymes I'm a poet and I didn't even know it y'all <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm going to screw the label holder to the Michaels box right above where we stuck the wall tile. I then took my rub and buff once again and I dry brush over those details to make everything look cohesive so that my lantern matches the other decor pieces. And I just feel like it just gives that beautiful shine. It brings out those details even more and I just love the look of this. Okay, y'all, we're in the home stretch. If you guys are still here, leave me a star down in the comments so that I can know that you made it this far. I appreciate you guys so much. Also, don't forget to share it out, you guys. We are so close to 100K. I literally cannot believe it. I have put my heart, my soul, blood, sweat, tears, money, literally my everything into this channel and bringing you guys amazing DIYs week after week. And I just can't believe we're so close. I have had this goal forever. And you guys, this is our 
win. This is our channel. It's not just my channel because I would not be here if it wasn't for you. So share this out. Let's get to 100K. I cannot wait to share the plaque with you guys. So anyway, I took this little um, light from Dollar Tree. I took off the bulb and I gave it two good coats once again, dry brushed it with the antique once again, and then surprise, surprise, I used the rub and buff to make it match. Now I'm gonna take this C hook and I'm just going to screw that in the top of our lantern and then I'm going to hang our little light. For the last and final step, you guys, I'm going to take this little jar holder, jar hanger, whatever you like to call it, and I thought it was absolutely perfect for the top of this lantern. So I'm going to use my Dollar Tree super glue and I'm going to super glue that down to the top. I'm also going to take one of these little ornaments that I got from Timu, these unfinished circle little ornaments. And it was just a little bit too big. I wanted to cover up that star because I felt that the design on the wall tile just didn't match with a star. So I just cut that wooden circle down. Now this does work as long as you have a very sturdy pair of scissors, you can easily um, cut that down to size and then I just hot glued that to the top of my jar holder and then once again gave it two coats of my white Waverly chalk paint including the little um, part where it's ha where the hanger is um, connected and I also gave the handle two good coats drying in between coats as well and then surprise surprise once that was dry I dry brushed it I made everything look nice and cohesive I put the rub and buff on there and you guys you guys I love 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 this lantern I cannot wait to hear what you guys think of it down in the comments section do you guys like it? Do you hate it? Is it okay? Let me know what you think. Would you guys have painted this a different color? I'm curious. So look how gorgeous it looks with all the other decor. Now the possibilities are endless with this. You can take that hanging light out. Now see here how you can see the top and it's not painted. It was after the fact when I was taking the pictures that I was like, duh, Melissa, that was not very smart. But I am going to take it back to the she shed and paint it. Um, so you could put a candle in here and take that light out. It's totally up to you. Let me know. Will you guys be making this? Look how gorgeous that rough and buff looks. Oh my God, you guys, I just cannot get enough of these projects. Let me know what type of projects you guys want to see in the future. To start with DIY number one, I'm going to take these tag signs that I got from Dollar Tree back at Christmas time and I'm going to cut the hangers off. Next, I'm going to flip them over to the back and then take the stickers off. Now, these stickers did not want to come off very easily, so all I did was heat them up really well with my blow dryer and then take a straight edge knife and just remove those stickers. Once the Next, I'm going to take some white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give one of the tag signs a distressed coat of paint. I also make sure to hit it with my blow dryer because y'all know that I am super impatient and I want this paint to dry really quickly. If you have time, you can just set it aside and it will dry on its own. And then for the second sign, I'm going to give it a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint. As always, I like to just mention that I am just strictly here for inspiration. I personally like the way the distressed coat of paint looks, but if you personally are not into rustic decor and you're more into like modern farmhouse decor, then you can totally give this one to two coats of paint. For the white sign, I'm going to take this chicken wire transfer that I got off of my chalk site. As always, I will leave all of the items that I can link for you 
down in the description box below as well as the pinned comment. And I just lay that down at the bottom. I chalk paste over it with my black paste. And then the trick to getting it not to bleed is to peel up your transfer nice and slow. I then blow dry it to make sure that it's nice and dry. That way, when I lay the transfer on the top, it's not going to pull up any of that paste. And then once it was completely dry, then I made sure to connect the chicken wire. Sorry, my big head was in the way. And then I go ahead and transfer the rest of that on. That is the reason I love Chalk Couture so much. The images always come out so crisp and clean. So if you guys did not know, I just recently lost 80 pounds and have the best energy in my life. There is no way with four kids, several businesses, and DIYing, I would be able to do what I do without my ketones. So if you guys want any info, text my number on the screen, the word ketones, or if you want to make money doing it, sharing your story, helping me to change the world, plus making whatever income you want. You guys, I'm the new verified car earner. The company literally pays you a car just to share how amazing this product is. Text my number, the word biz. Um, but anyway, I give the black sign a coat of white Waverly chalk paint distressing. Again, if you don't like distressing, then totally leave that out. And then I use my April Club Couture transfer, the, fr the Farm Fresh, and I transfer that on with my white paste. Now, actually, this was ink. If you did not know, we have ink for like shirts and cups. This is permanent when you heat set it. I didn't realize it was uh, ink. So if you're going to do this project, make sure you're using paste because on a sign like this, it's going to be permanent permanent anyway. So once I have that transferred on, then I peel back that transfer and reveal that gorgeous image. And then I'm going to take my large chip brush. Y'all know I can't talk. What else is new? I don't think that will ever change. I'm, I'm doing my best to change that, but I like to show you guys my real raw self and I feel like editing that out um, does not show my authentic self because I have ADHD and a lot of times my mouth works slower than my brain does. <laughs> Can anybody else relate? Let me know down in the comments. But I give the chicken wire sign a distressed coat of my Waverly Wax and then I set that aside to dry. Next, I'm going to take some jute from Dollar Tree. I put a dab of hot glue in the back. I put the jute to the dab of hot glue and then I wrap it around the top just randomly until my eyes are happy. Now, because this tag sign is on an angle where I did wrap it, I knew that if I didn't glue those edges that it would eventually like slide off. So the trick to get really, really nice um, hot glue in the back instead of like big old clumps is to um, put a bead of hot glue and then put like a squeegee over it and you will be left with really, really nice uh, glue spots, if that makes sense. I don't know if glue spots can be nice, but you guys get what I'm saying. I'm going to show you what I mean here in a second. And then at the bottom, I do the exact same thing, but just with a thinner um, line of the jute. Next, I'm going to lay my sign down just to see kind of how um, I want this to lay. And then once I figured it out, I glued right where the grommet is on the white sign as well as on the back of the black sign. And then I go ahead and glue those together. Next, I'm going to take these ribbons. One is like a burlap ribbon with frayed edges. I absolutely love it, but I'm trying to use it sparingly because I got it back 
at fall time at Walmart and now I cannot find it anywhere just like that um, if you guys have been around I have I've been using this farmhouse ribbon and I have no more and I can't find it and I'm so mad at myself that I did not grab several rolls but hey you live and you learn right so anyway I took this um, these two different types of ribbons both from Walmart I lay the buffalo check one on top of the burlap one and glue that down and then I just make a very simple bow tying that in the middle with some jute I then cut the ends and set that aside next I'm going to take this nautical rope and I'm going to tie that up at the top and once again, I'm going to cut the edges off. And then, you guys, I could not figure out where I wanted my bow. I was, I was, now that I'm seeing it in editing, I think it was really cute on an angle like that. But I just couldn't decide. Um, I am super indecisive. So I just went ahead and I glued it at the top of the Farm Fresh sign. And look how gorgeous this turned out. I love it so, so, so much. And I can't wait to hear what you guys think down in the comment section below. Moving on to DIY number two. Oh my goodness, you guys, this project. <laughs> If it wasn't for this project, I would have had several other DIYs out to you, but this project wanted to give me a really hard time. You're going to see that here in a minute. But to start off, I'm going to take these square signs with the beaded hangers from Dollar Tree, take them out of the plastic, and I remove the hanger and put the beads aside of course I always save stuff like that because you never know when you could use it now when I was doing this I got another great idea for a lantern so if you guys want to see that let me know down in the comments but I'm going to take the backs out and then I'm going to take this scrapbook paper that I believe I got at Hobby Lobby or Michaels um, I know it was one or the other I just can't remember I've had it for a long time but it is a like faux wood and I love it because it looks distressed so I just measure out pieces that I need to go over these backs and then once I had them cut out then I'm going to glue them down with my disappearing purple glue stick now when I do this I go ahead and I glue the edges and this stuff dries pretty quickly so you want to work at a good pace you don't have to work like super fast but you just want to work at a good pace and then I glue around the edge of the paper and then the back of the picture frame. After I made sure that it was nice and smooth, then I'm just going to cut off the excess because, hello, I'm Melissa and I cannot cut a straight line <laughs> to save my life. So once I had all three done, then I'm going to, of course, distress them with my antique Waverly Wax and a nice big chip brush that I get at Home Depot. Once again, I do that to all three. And then I go ahead and hit them all with my blow dryer to make sure that they are nice and dry. So here I was just showing you the difference with the distressing and without it. Again, if you don't like it, totally leave it off. But I go in my stash and I just got three different farmhouse transfers. Now my idea was to have two animals on either side and then in the middle have like an image. So I cut out this cow from my Amazon transfers and the original one that I had in the middle, I just didn't really like that one. So I literally cannot get enough of this Amazon windmill transfer. So of course I went ahead and used that. Once I had them placed down, then I transfer them on with my black chalk paste. Now, the windmill pulled up beautifully, but here we are, and I was like, oh my gosh, and this was so weird, you guys. It didn't pull up the paper where the sticky part was. It pulled up the paper where the animal was, like the silk screen part. It was so strange. I could not figure it out. It did that for both the animals animals. I don't know if it was just because it was such a large space that was chalked 
Um, but anyway, <laughs> here I am attempting to do this again, and I don't even know why I kept fuzzing it the second time. So I took it to my sink. I forgot to mention that I did wash these off, and they did wash off really nicely. Um, but the chicken transferred on perfectly fine, but the cow was like, yeah, no, not happening. So I just threw that one to the side. I was absolutely over it, you guys. Maybe in the future, I will try to redo it that way. I could have this as a set, but for now, um, I just put that one to the side and then I took the black frames and distressed them with my white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brushes that I got off Amazon that are always linked in my, in my Amazon shop down in the description box as well as the pinned comment. You will see all links are now in one place. So I distressed them with my chalk paint and then I just put the pictures back into the frame and that was it for DIY number two. I absolutely love the way that they turned out. The simplicity of them is so perfect. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Hey friends, for the last and final DIY number three. Now this is a whole DIY, but then there's several other DIYs in it. If you guys are new, which is why I did this project, um, about two years ago, I made this farmhouse crate DIY. I feel like that DIY put me on the map in the DIY world. I don't know you guys, maybe it's in my head, but I still get comments about that DIY to this day. And I've been getting comments that you guys have been wanting to see another one of these. So I wanted to make a smaller version. So I take um, six Dollar Tree crates. And if you did not know, you guys, they duped us. They changed the size of these crates. They are much smaller than they used to be when I did this original project. So I was kind of annoyed at that. But I glued them together with some hot glue and some wood glue, three at the top, three at the bottom, making sure to put clips in the middle to make sure that they glued together nicely. And then once that the glue was completely dry, then of course, y'all know I gave it a coat of my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Now for this part, I would definitely suggest to pop on a show or have some music going because staining or painting this does take some time and some patience because I like to stain the back and then the sides and all staining all of the sides plus the back again does take some patience and some time but I just had my music going I was having a good old time it didn't bother me but I did just want to mention that I then took some stir sticks that I got from some stir sticks yeah stir sticks <laughs> stir sticks from Home Depot and I measure them oh my gosh you guys I cannot talk tonight good lord help us all I measure them out I cut them down with my saw sand the edges and then I give them a distress coat front back and sides of my white Waverly chalk paint and as you can see here I love these chip brushes from Amazon but they they do get annoying you guys um the bristles shed everywhere it's just not a good time so before I use them I do try to like pull as many bristles out as I can but it's not always perfect so actually, you guys, this is how my DIYs, DIYs work. As I go along, I, I get ideas. So I was just going to put label holders again, like my original one. But then I was like, you know what? Wouldn't that be cool if I put those Dollar Tree um, wall stickers that everybody loved from my last DIY video or the DIY video before last? Um, wouldn't that be cool if I measured those out and glued those to the front? So that's exactly what I did. I measured them out, cut them down, and then glued those to the front of my stir sticks. Next, I'm going to paint them both with my white Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to dry them with my blow dryer and then give them a second coat. Now,
Next, I'm going to trim down the edges because, again, your girl cannot cut a straight line to save my life. If you guys have any um, tips or tricks on how to cut a straight line, um, let me know. Now, I do have one of those, like, paper cutters, but on stuff like this, you can't use it because it has raised edges, so... I guess there's just no hope for me, but that's okay because I trimmed it down to be perfect. And then I, of course, distressed it with my big chip brush and my antique wax. I also make sure to distress the edges because when it's displayed, you can see them. And then I repeat the same steps for the second stir stick. Same thing as my video when I use these. I took some gold antique, or is it antique gold? Yeah, antique gold rub and buff, just a tiny bit. You guys, you don't need much of this at all. I take a tiny bit of rub and buff on a chip brush and I just dry brush over all of those edges, or I should say raised uh, details. Once I was completely finished and dry, then I just glue my stir sticks down to the bottom of the crates on both layers. I then take my big chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I do dry brush all the way around the sides as well as the top and the edges on the front. Now, I was going to dry brush like inside of the boxes, but because I'm gonna have decor in these, in these boxes, and of course, I'm gonna show you guys how to make the decor that I made. Um, I did not worry about dry brushing inside of them, but if you wanna do that, then you can go ahead. It's totally up to you. Now, when I was moving on to the decor, I realized that I didn't really like that you could see the holes at the top. So I just took a scrap piece of those wall stickers, measured it out, and then repeated the same steps at the top that I did for the front pieces. And I don't know what it is about these wall decal stickers or whatever you want to call them, you guys. I'm freaking obsessed with them. Like, <laughs> I literally want to use them for everything now. And then painting them is so therapeutic. I don't even know how to explain it. But just covering them and, like, getting in all the details, I don't know what it is about it. And then once it's, like, two good coats of paint... It just looks so beautiful. I don't know. Then, when you dry brush over all those details, I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird, but I just absolutely love it. So, anyway, once I was done that, then I took out these finials. Is that how you say it? Finial? 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 <laughs> I know somebody in the comments will correct me, but I take these pieces... I had four of them, and I had skinnier ones and then chunkier ones, and I just like the look of the chunkier ones with this particular project, so I gave them all a good coat of my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Of course, I dried them, and then once they were completely dry, then I glued them to the bottom to make little tiny feet, and I just love them. I did not make feet on my last project like this. I also um, used label holders like I said on the front of this in the last one so there's definitely some differences in this one from the last one but you guys I could make these things over and over and over again like there's so many different variations you could do and I think that's just why I love them so much but anyway so moving on to all of the decor on the inside I'm going to take this jar that I actually got from a yard sale this guy, you guys, he had like 
milk crates and like probably 30 milk crates full of just little tiny different jars. He said at one time he was collecting these. So I grabbed a bunch and this was one of them and I gave them, I gave it two good coats of sandstone Waverly chalk paint. And because when you're painting on glass, if you're not careful, your second coat of paint will just pull up your first coat of paint. And of course, I was in a time crunch. So I went ahead and distressed it with my sander. I sanded like around it randomly. And then I took some jute and glued it to the back, tied it around that little neck, cut it, and then glued it once again. Next, I'm going to take some greenery that I had in my stash. I'm going to cut off a few little picks and arrange that in my little jar. And this is so stinking cute. It would be perfect for a tiered tray. And I just love the way that this looks. For the second little decor piece, I'm going to take this jar from Dollar Tree that I got back at fall time. It had this gorgeous little hanging decor on it I don't know what you want to call it um charm that's what it is a charm <laughs> it, it had this little gold leaf charm around the neck with a piece of wire so I do just cut that wire I gave this two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint and then of course I distressed it again with my mini zip sander now I get a lot of questions about this little zip sander now you can find this in my Amazon shop down below but you can also get them I believe at like Home Depot um, I have seen them at Home Depot before so um, it's up to you you can either shop my Amazon link which I do receive a small commission or you can grab it at your local Home Depot it's totally up to you but once I distressed it with my zip sander then I also distressed it with my antique wax and once again put jute around the neck of the bottle I also put the little leaf charm back on there. I glued that to the back because I cut it a little bit too short, but no big deal. The glue held it nicely. And then I just felt that it, this jar was just a little bit too plain. So I went in my stash and found this farm fresh milk transfer that I got off of my chalk site. I transfer that on with my black chalk paste and then to peel it back you just want to peel back nice and slow so you don't get any bleeding and look how gorgeous this little jar is. I feel like it looks just like a little milk jar with the little leaf. I love it so much. Let me know down in the comments what you think as well. So for the next DIY, actually for the next two DIYs, I'm going to take these planks from Do these wood planks from Dollar Tree. I'm going to stick one in my crate and see how much I need to cut off and then I use my DeWalt handheld circular saw. <laughs> I can't find my words tonight. My circular saw and I'm going to cut that down to size. For the first one, I'm going to give it a distressed coat of my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. And for the second one, I'm going to give it a distressed coat of my Ink Waverly Chalk Paint, making sure that I dry them really well. I then distress the Dixie Belle stained one with my white Waverly chalk paint. And for the black one, I just left that one plain because I'm going to use this shiplap transfer again from my chalk site. And I'm going to transfer that shiplap on with my white chalk paste. Once again, I'm going to make sure it is completely dry with my blow dryer because next I'm going to transfer on a different image, which I believe came in the same transfer as this shiplap. It's this little Live Simply with a wreath around it. I think it's so stinking cute. So I transferred on the wreath with my pesto chalk paste, which is obviously a green, and then the wording with my white paste. 
Now this is why I tell you to pull them up slow because it did bleed a little bit, but I still love the way this one turned out. For the next one, are you shocked? <laughs> <laughs> are you shocked i'm gonna use this windmill and i did not press this windmill down good enough you guys because it once again bled at this point i was rushing i'm not gonna lie to you guys i was rushing because i wanted to get this video out to you so if you're transferring anything on anything make sure that you smooth out the transfer really well so it sticks and then pull up your transfer nice and slow that way it doesn't bleed once my windmill was dry then i pull this locally grown transfer from my stash once again from the chalkator farmhouse transfers and i transfer that on with my black paste right in the middle the next little mini DIY, I'm going to take this lantern that I got from Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section. And this one was broken when I got it. I actually got it at half price because it was broken, but I knew that I could do something with it. So it was no big deal to me, but it actually was a happy mistake that the bottom didn't that the bottom came off of it because the bottom didn't fit in the crate anyway. So I just removed the bottom and threw that away. And then I gave it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint as well as I distressed it with my antique wax. Then I'm going to take the little tea light candle that was in the bottom. I'm gonna turn it on just to make sure it looked right now. I wanted to put something in this lantern. I just felt it was a little too plain, but I couldn't figure out what to put in there. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. But I cut the little tabs off that went into the bottom wood piece, and that was it for that lantern. Now for the last little mini DIY for this, I did not realize I wasn't filming. All I did was take that little house piece. It was already black. I didn't like the image on the back. And I transferred on the farmer's market with my gold and my white paste. And look how stunning this is, you guys. I'm loving it so, so much. I can't wait to hear what you think down in the comment section below. Which little mini DIY was your favorite? Which DIY from this video was your favorite. I think I already know what you guys are going to say, but are you guys loving the decal stickers on the front or do you like the label holders that I put in my original one? If you haven't seen that video, I will link it down below for you guys. You guys everybody makes lanterns okay i even made a gorgeous lantern in my last diy video so if you guys have not checked that out i will leave it linked in the comments as well as at the end of this video so once you're done watching this then you can find it super easily but i take these frames from dollar tree now i started with four but you want to go ahead and do all six at the same time just so that way they you save time and they all are nice and evenly painted. So I ripped off the little stand in the back and then I used my screwdriver to pull up those little tabs, remove the backing as well as the picture inside, and then I just push those tabs down once again. Next, I'm going to take my bamboo sticks that I get off Amazon. Once again, I'll have it linked down below for you guys in my Amazon shop. You'll see all links are now in one place, and that's where you can find all of my links. Um, but I just lay these bamboo sticks over on an angle on my frame. I mark it to make an X, and then I cut it down with my scissors. If it's still a little a little bit too big i just go ahead and cut a little at a time until it fits perfectly i then repeated that step for the second side and once i had the full piece cut then i hold it over once again i mark it in the middle and then cut that down that way they lay really nicely on the glass once i was done doing the first x then I just held it up to my other bamboo sticks and I just cut four of the full piece and obviously eight of the half pieces. And once again, each frame is just a tiny bit different. Um, so you just want to make sure that you are holding it into your frame and 
if it needs to be adjusted then to just adjust it accordingly. Once I had all of my pieces cut, then I just use my chip brush that I get off Amazon. Now, if you guys have been around for any length of time, then I used to use these little baby chip brushes. I used to love them so much, but everybody sold them out. All the DIYer, DIYers started using them, and then all of um, the subscribers started using them, and now I can't get them anymore. I do have one pack. I'm just like so afraid to use it because I know I can't get them anymore, but I did find a close alternative on Amazon now these shed pretty bad so what I do with these is I just kind of pull out the bristles as much as possible before I start painting that way it gives you less fallout but I do go ahead and I dry brush or no I didn't dry brush <laughs> it's late here and I'm trying to get this out to you on Friday night so just bear with me you guys but um, I used my chip brush and I stained all of the pieces front and back and then once they were completely dry then I used another chip brush and I dry brushed my white Waverly chalk paint on both sides as well. Next, we're going to move on to the frames once again, and I just start by using my super glue, and I'm going to put a little dab in each corner, and then I'm also going to put little dabs in the glass. Because this glass was not completely filling the inside of the frame, I do just put a little dot to make sure that the glass is not going to go anywhere, and then I go ahead and glue my X pieces down. Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the label holders with my drill, and I set those aside. I then took my chip brush and my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain, and I'm going to heavily dry brush all the way around each frame. Next, I'm going to dry brush my white Waverly chalk paint all the way around all four frames as well. And then I use my hot glue to glue them all together in a box. Now I start with one frame. I put a bead of hot glue down the side, glue the next frame to it. I repeat on the other side, and then I glue the last frame on the inside of the two side frames. I then just finish those unfinished edges with my white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush. And then I take this square wood piece from Dollar Tree. I sit my little frame over it. I mark it where it needs to be cut. And then I use my DeWalt circular saw to cut that down. Thank you. 
once that was cut and I sanded down the edges. Then I used my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain once again. Surprise, surprise. Now, I just want to say that I love Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. I am not sponsored in any way, um, but I love it because it's non-toxic. It doesn't stink. It dries very quickly and it just gives such a beautiful application. So once that was completely dry, then surprise, surprise, I used my chip brush and I dry brushed that white Waverly chalk paint. I then just glue my frame right down on top of my piece of wood. Now this is exactly why I told you to do six frames at once because now we're going to move on to the roof part. So I take the same frames once again. I rip off the little stands and the stickers off the back. I take the pictures out of the inside but this time I'm going to use the backs. I'm going to paint it with my white Waverly chalk paint giving it a distressed coat. And then I'm also going to dry brush that with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain once the white Waverly chalk paint was completely dry. Once again, I'm going to dry brush that voodoo stain around the frames and then finish it with my white Waverly chalk paint once it's dry. I did forget to mention that I did take off the labels, the label holders, and I do leave them off for the roof pieces and then I also glue the roof pieces together. Now, y'all know I love to leave in my mistakes. I am no perfect crafter, and when I make mistakes, I just do my best to fix it, and it is no big deal. So don't be, don't be intimidated, y'all. I know that you can do this project. It's super easy, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are how we learn. So I just pulled that apart because originally I tried to glue it right on the edge and I realized that I just needed to glue them together um, on the flat part of the frame to make sure that it glued together really nicely. So once that was glued together then I took these little tiny wreaths that I got from Hobby Lobby and I take that same Walmart greenery that we used in the beginning of the video and I just glue down my greenery going around and around in one direction. Now this was pretty fluffy and wonky and I just didn't really like that look. It was driving me crazy so I did cut it down until my eyes were happy. I repeated those same steps with my second little wreath and because I felt that there were a few little bare spots, I did use the scraps to glue down in the bare spots. Once my wreaths were completely finished, then I went ahead and glued those down to my roof. I also used my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint to make sure that the unfinished edges look cohesive with the rest of my lantern. Now the possibilities are endless with what you put in your lantern. You can put a plant, you can put all types of stuff in here, you guys. I chose to go with a candle and because we have greenery at the top, I didn't feel it was necessary to put any greenery at the bottom. But if you like that look, you totally can. And let me know what you guys think of DIY number two down in the comment section below. I'm going to take this welcome sign from Dollar Tree and once again this piece of scrap wood 
Now this piece of wood came from Dollar Tree at Christmas time when they had those little wooden 3D scenes. Um, and I always save scrap wood like this because you never know what you can use it for. So I flipped it over because it does have lines at the bottom and I stained it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. While that was drying, I take my welcome sign out of the plastic and then I remove the welcome sign with my screwdriver. It was only glued down in certain spots with some super glue, I believe. Um, so this did come up pretty easily. It was no big deal. And it was that MDF board. Um, so it did chip apart, but no big deal. We weren't using it anyway. I then wiped off the excess stain and I sanded down spots where the welcome sign was glued to the sign. Once the bottom piece was completely dry, then once again, I dry brushed with my white Waverly chalk paint. And then I dug in my stash for a piece of scrapbook paper that kind of went with the theme of this decor. If you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know I like all of my projects to match. I don't know if it's an OCD thing or an ADHD thing, but when I am doing projects, I don't know why my brain works like that. Is anybody else like that or is it just me? So anyway, once I found the perfect scrapbook paper, I just laid it over my sign and kind of pushed it down to get an indentation of where I need to cut and then I cut it down to size. I used my disappearing purple glue stick to glue not only the sign itself but the back of the scrapbook paper and then I went ahead and put that on my sign making sure to smooth it down really nicely. Next, I'm gonna take this Farm Sweet Farm transfer. I thought it was so cute with the little barn and the chicken at the top. And because we are transferring onto paper, I did make sure to fuzz this really, really well. And then I laid it down in my sign and I used my black chalk paste to transfer on that image. I then went ahead and peeled back my transfer. It worked out beautifully. I love the way that this looks. And then I just made a simple jute bow with my finger bow trick. I adjusted my little finger bow because when you're trying to make a little teeny tiny bow, sometimes the jute wants to be a little bit wonky because it was on a roll. So I just go ahead and fool with it for a little bit until I was satisfied. I cut off the edges and then I hot glued that right on the chicken's feet where it met the barn. Last but not least, I once again hot glued my little picture to the bottom piece so that it could have a little stand. And that was it for DIY number three, you guys. Look how gorgeous this turned out. I absolutely love it and it went perfect with my decor. Okay, friends, for DIY number one, obviously, I totally forgot to hit the record button. I was just so excited to get these DIYs out to you guys that I jumped the gun. But all I did was lay out the transfer that I wanted to use. I marked it. I used my painter's tape to tape off that middle section. I painted it with my white Waverly chalk paint. And then once that was completely dry, I taped it off on the top and bottom and stained it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. Once that was completely dry, I removed the tape and then I dry brushed some of my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain on the middle. But I just did a light dry brushing. Um, I kind of wish that I would have went a little bit more heavy, but no big deal. Once 
the dry brushing was completely dry. Then I'm going to stir up my paste really, really well. You always want to make sure that you stir it up. That way you don't get any bleeding. And then I went ahead and transferred on my image. Once I transferred that on, then I peel back my transfer to reveal this gorgeous, crisp image. And this is why I love it so much, you guys. The images come out absolutely gorgeous. It is literally so easy to use. Anybody can do it. In fact, when my daughter was five years old, she was a pro at Chalk Couture. So I know she can do it at five years old. Anybody can do it. You don't need any special software or, you know, machine. Now, don't get me wrong. A Cricut is nice for certain things, but I just personally do not have the time for a Cricut. Um, so Chalk Couture is my go-to. Once I had my image transferred on, then I'm going to take these half unfinished wooden beads and I hot glue them at the bottom and at the top as well. Next, I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain and I'm going to stain all of my half beads. Now, again, I forgot to hit the record button, um, but in order to get in between all of these, you just want to make sure that you're looking at them at different angles and just cover any spots that you missed. And the easiest way that I found to do this is do kind of like a twirling motion with your brush. Once that was completely dry, then I just dry brushed all of the half beads with my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I went into my stash and I pulled out some greenery. Now, I got these from Walmart, y'all. If you've been around for any amount of time, then you know that I absolutely love Walmart florals. They are really high-end looking, but they are just such a great price that you can't beat it. So, I got these at Walmart. I cut a few picks off of the main stem, and then I kind of bent them so that they would fit right on top of the wooden beads and then once I was satisfied with the way that they looked then I went ahead and glued them down at the bottom with some hot glue now looking back while I'm editing this I kind of wish I would have put them at the top instead of the bottom however you can let me know down in the comments what you guys think so once I had the first type of greenery glued down I also took a little bit of that other greenery right to my left hand side I forget what it's called and I just kind of arranged that at the bottom to cover up the stems or the picks I should say whatever you want to call it and then I made a simple bow with this ribbon that I got again at Walmart and I glued that down to the top I also dovetailed the ends, and this is exactly why I love doing wood round projects because they are just so easy to do. They come out absolutely stunning, and I'm just so in love with this sign. Let me know, are you guys tired of the wood round signs, or are you like me and you literally could never get tired of them? For the next DIY, I take this Market Fresh flower sign from Dollar Tree, and I was not sure. At first, you guys, I was going to stain this, so obviously I'm staining it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. Y'all know my favorite stain, and I am in no way affiliated with them. I do have the link down below, um, but I do not earn anything from it. I just personally love this particular product so much that I just use it for everything, um, but but I stain it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and then I wipe away the excess before I blow dry it. Now, like I said in the beginning, I was going to stain this and then paint all of the little details and the wording with my white Waverly chalk paint. However, I actually got a different idea. So the Again, if you guys have been around, then you've heard me say this. This is how my ideas 
come about. Like I, it starts out as one idea. And then as I'm going, I'm like, I just start adding and, and getting different ideas. So I start by painting the um, edge underneath the trim underneath. Oh my God. Y'all know I can't talk underneath the trim. Uh, white and on the original sign there is like a line so I just kind of followed the line and I painted that with my white paint now this next part was a little bit tricky so I realized that I wanted to make a farmhouse sign with this so I took these wall creation stickers from Dollar Tree they're like um, wallpaper and I start by laying out the entire sign tracing it and then cutting it out now i just wanted to have that middle piece covered so i was like holy crap how am i going to do this and get it to the right shape and right size so like i said i just um traced the entire sign cut it out and then i laid it on my sign to kind of eyeball how much i needed off of the edges and then I just cut a little bit off of the edges, um, little by little. You, I didn't want to cut too much off. So you can always cut more off, but you can't add it. You would have to cut a new piece. So I did go ahead and cut that a few times until it was perfect. Then I realized that I really did need to cover more of that edge. So I just went ahead and covered a little bit more. And then once that was completely dry, I dry brushed all the way around that white inner part with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain and my chip brush. And my chip brushes are always linked down in the description box below in my Amazon shop. You will see all of my links are now in one place because I do have them in my milkshake, which is just like a link tree I then use the same brush and stain and I dry brush all the way around the little wall sticker Of course, y'all know I am super impatient, so I go ahead and make sure that's super dry with my blow dryer, and then I'm just going to do the exact same thing around the edges and the frame of this sign with my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm going to take my little sticker and I'm going to take the backing off and then put that right in the middle and then smooth that down as best as possible. Then I'm going to take this farmhouse transfer. I'm going to lay it down and then smooth it out once again and transfer that on with my black chalk paste. Once again, you want to make sure that you have nice, even pressure. And then I peel back that transfer to reveal yet again this gorgeous image. Now this transfer and the rest that I use in this video, I believe, are from Amazon. And I will leave them linked down in the description box below for you guys. Next, I'm going to take these Dollar Tree crates and I'm going to take the sticker off and once again, surprise, surprise, stain them with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Once I had it covered on the outside, I do go ahead and wipe off the excess stain and then I also stain the inside as well. Once the first crate was completely covered, then I go ahead and stain the second one as well, and then I dry them with my blow dryer. I then went inside and grabbed an egg. I just personally love brown eggs, so we had some, and I wanted to get the exact brown egg color for the eggs that I am about to paint. So I just went in my acrylic paint stash and I just pulled out a few different colors that I thought would go together to 
make the brown egg color so I ended up using like a mustardy yellow a little bit of orange and brown and I just continued to add those together until I got the perfect color then I took these little mini eggs from Dollar Tree that I got back at Easter time. I put them on skewers and I painted all of them with two coats of this paint that I made up. Once those were completely dry, then I took some antique wax by Waverly on the end of a chip brush and I just kind of flicked that onto the eggs because as most of you know, brown eggs do have little dots and speckles on them and if you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know how OCD I am to make things look as realistic as possible. Um, so I just did it until my eyes were happy and as always I suggest that you do the same. Once they were completely dry and I pulled them off the skewers, I went ahead and painted where the skewers were. That way you could not see the inside of my little eggs. And then I took my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I went ahead and I dry brushed all the way around my crates. As always, if you do not like dry brushing, you can totally leave this out. I know some of you just like the more modern look and some of you like the rustic look. So whichever look you're going for, you do what makes you happy. Dry brushing personally makes me happy. S happy. <laughs> someday I'll be able to talk y'all I appreciate y'all bearing with me um, but dry brushing makes me happy so I personally add it but it's totally your choice once they were dry brushed then I went ahead and glued them together and then I took a round dowel rod from Dollar Tree I cut it in half and then I glued that to the back of my sign Once the dowel rods are glued down, I just make sure there are no glue strings and then I'm going to go ahead and glue that down to my little crates. Now I wasn't too sure how I wanted to do this, if I wanted to glue it to the back or to the back inside and I ultimately decided to glue it to the back of the crates. So I just put some glue on the front of the dowel rods as well as the bottom of the sign and I go ahead and glue that in place. And honestly, you guys, look how cute this is by itself. You could put so many different things in here, some greenery. Um, you use your imagination. Let me know your ideas down in the comments. Maybe I will switch mine out from time to time. But I just took some of this Spanish moss. I put that down in the bottom of the crates, and then I arranged my eggs at the top. And I still felt it was missing a little something. So I took these circle ornaments um, from Timu, I believe, and I cut off the little edge of the ornament to make it a complete circle. I sand it down smooth and then give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And then once that was dry, I take my chip brush and my voodoo stain. I dab off the excess and dry brush all the way around the circle as well as the inside. And I did use a pretty heavy hand. Now, once again, if you do not like dry brushing, you can totally skip that step. Next, I'm going to take this little chicken transfer. I'm going to transfer that on to the middle of my circle. Once again, making sure to use even steady pressure. Do not use too much paste. Make sure your paste is nice and stirred up. That way, when you peel it back, you reveal a crisp, gorgeous image. Once my little chicken was dry, then I went ahead and glued that to the middle of my crates, making sure that the bottom of the circle met the bottom of the crate so that it sat 
nicely. And that was it for this project. I did put a little bit of greenery in the back. I felt that it was just missing a little color and I absolutely love the way that this turned out. It's so funny that this was originally going to be a market sign, like a flower market sign. Um, I, I was just going to paint it and call it a day and this is what we came up with. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number two. Hey friends, for DIY number three, I'm going to start off with a roll of jute and some painter's tape. I'm going to cut the end and then add some painter's tape to make sure that I can get through these beads. If you haven't figured it out, we're going to make a beaded garland. So I just tie a knot, or I should say a loop at the end of my jute, and then I'm going to start by um, adding the beads. These black and brown beads are from Dollar Tree. I'm going to start with black, go to a natural wood one. Now the natural ones came off of hanging signs from Dollar Tree and um, I used the frames for something completely different than having the beaded hanger on it. So of course I always save stuff like that and I loved that these were a little rustic. They were not completely perfect so I actually really love that. But you guys can get very creative with these. You can use your own pattern. You can use different colors. You can actually use unfinished wood beads and just paint them whatever color you like. But I did find the black and the brown from Dollar Tree so I just alternated the brown the unfinished wood black unfinished wood brown so on and so forth once I was done with my garland then I did not tie the end just yet you guys are going to see here why but I made a tassel by wrapping it wrapping the jute around my hand about 30 times taking it off of my hand tying a piece of string up at the top or jute at the top cutting the bottom and then I also tied another piece a little bit further down from the first knot at the top you want to create a loop at the top that way it's super easy to add to your garland and then I trimmed down my jute once I was done trimming my jute down to make sure that it's nice and even, y'all know I'm OCD, so it takes me a little bit to cut each piece perfectly. But then I go ahead and I uh, space out my beads and I pull out my ribbon from Dollar Tree. These came in strips with multiple different patterns, uh, multiple different farmhouse patterns, I should say. And they were a little bit too thick, so I just cut them in half. These are two inch strips, and I just went ahead and cut them in one inch strips and then opened them up. I put them in piles. I did end up using two packs, but I didn't use all of the strips, so I probably could have gotten away with just one pack, but no big deal. Now I have strips in my stash for something else, but I did go ahead, lay them on my cutting mat. I cut them in half, and then I cut the end in half once again. So all together with each strip, you should have four pieces of fabric. Once I had all of my pieces cut, I then took these farm animals from Dollar Tree that were on a shorter garland. I cut them off and tied them to the end of my garland and then I am ready to add the strips of fabric. So again, I just started off with the um, black pattern and I tied that on the bottom and then I went every two beads I tied another one and I just alternated the patterns and this is exactly why I did not tie a knot at the end because as I went along tying my fabric I did have to continue to push the beads up and adjust them so that's why you definitely want to make sure to leave the end um, not only with plenty of jute at the end but do not tie it that way you can adjust it 
So once I was done adding all of my fabric every second bead, I tied my jute tassel, making sure to double knot it several times. Once I double knotted it, then I cut off the excess, and I also did cut the pieces of fabric a little bit shorter. And the reason you don't wanna cut the fabric shorter at first is because if you have a super short piece, it's actually really hard to tie a knot. So you always wanna start with a longer strand and then cut it down as you go if you don't like how long it is that way you have plenty of material to work with and look how gorgeous this turned out i cannot get enough of it let me know down in the comments do you guys like these patterns would you have changed anything up i'm always super curious to know your thoughts Okay friends, and for DIY number four, if you guys are still here, I want you to know how much I love and appreciate you. So I'm gonna take these square boxes from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna start off by gluing them all together with some wood glue and some hot glue. The wood glue is gonna make sure that the hold lasts and then the hot glue is going to make sure that it sticks together quickly. That way you can move on to the next step without having to wait. So I glue the top three together first and as you can see here, I obviously um, had the bottom at the top, which was no big deal. I just removed the sticker and then I did the same for the bottom and then glued the top to the bottom. I then took out all of the drawers and I painted all of the sides except for the back. Now, when I was doing this, I was on a time crunch, so I probably would have painted the fronts of the drawers. I should have said the fronts of the drawers that are now gonna be the backs of the drawers. Um, but again, I was on a time crunch, so no big deal because you're not gonna be able to see it. And then once I was done painting the drawers, then I went ahead and painted my little cat cabinet, shelf, whatever you would like to call it, and I did all of the sides, the back, as well as the front little edges. I did not worry about painting on the insides of the boxes because the little drawers are such a tight fit. You're not gonna see the inside anyway, um, but if that bothers you, you can totally cover it, but once again, I was on a time crunch. I then placed my drawers back into the boxes, making sure that the front pattern goes to the back. And then I'm gonna take my larger chip brush that I get at Home Depot. I get a pack of 10 for pretty cheap. I think they're like eight bucks for a pack of 10. Don't quote me, but I do get a big pack from Home Depot. And then I use my white Waverly chalk paint to dry brush all the way around the edges as well as the front. And again, if you don't like dry brushing, totally skip this step. Next, I'm gonna take these mini transfers from Dollar Tree. No, not Dollar Tree. <laughs> I'm so used to saying Dollar Tree. Amazon, I got these off Amazon. Once again, I will link them for you guys. And I just cut them apart and kind of uh, arranged them in the front to my liking. And of course, I forgot to hit the record button, but I did just transfer them on with my white paste. Now they did bleed a little bit because your girl forgot to stir my paste, but no big deal. I think it still looks beautiful. And then I took these little mini pulls once again from my Amazon shop and I go ahead and super glue them down to the middle of each box. Once those were glued down, then I'm going to take these wooden houses from Dollar Tree. I'm going to start by, I was going to measure them out onto the box, but I went ahead and removed the backing. It's super easy. All you have to do is just score the paper on the inside of the box, and then you're gonna cut around the back of the box where the backing meets the frame of these houses, if that makes sense, and then it just pushes out really easily. 
So once again, I do that for both of them. And then I go ahead and lay out that backing onto my wall tile from Dollar Tree. Y'all absolutely loved when I used these in a previous video. So once I had them traced out, then I went ahead and cut them down. And I also forgot to mention to get the most out of your material, I did go ahead and cut them together side by side, or I should say trace them side by side. That way I use the least bit of material as possible then I cut them in half and I gave them two good coats with my white Waverly chalk paint and the easiest way to do this since it is patterned is to just kind of do like a twirling motion and that is just to make sure that every bit of this gets covered and then once the first layer was dry then I went ahead and gave it a second coat once that was dry I took my large chip brush and some antique wax by Waverly. I almost said Dixie Belle voodoo stain, but the voodoo stain is more of like a watery consistency, whereas the antique wax is more of, like I said, like a wax. So some things I like to dry brush with my Dixie Belle voodoo stain, but for something like this, the wax just works a little bit better. Once I was satisfied with my dry brushing, I did use my rub and buff like I did in my previous projects. And of course, I will link that video um, in the description box as well as the pinned comment for y'all where all the other info will be. And I just kind of dry brush that over the pattern to make it look like the other decor that I made. Then once I was satisfied with that, I went ahead and glued that down to the back of my house. Now, of course, y'all know that I cannot cut a straight line to save my life. So I did just have to trim that to the back of the little house, which is no big deal. I cannot cut y'all, which... <laughs> <laughs> I hear that from a lot of you guys as well. I don't know what it is, but I could not cut a straight line if my life depended on it. <laughs> but once I had my backs on and cut down and ready to go, I just dry brush all the way around my frames with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Um, the Voodoo Stain just takes a lot better to this type of material. And then once I was satisfied with the way it looked, then I glued the frame to the back. If y'all are still here paying attention, y'all are the real OGs. And I just want you to know how much I greatly appreciate your love and support. And I would so appreciate if you would share this out for me, y'all. I cannot believe how close to 100K we are. But anyway, um, leave me a chicken emoji down in the comments. That way I know you're still with me. But once I had the backs glued on, then I did cut the excess off once again um, for some odd reason I guess I didn't cut it down good enough but I did take a sharper pair of scissors to make sure that I cut it down as best as possible once I had both of the frames glued to the backs then I took those circle ornaments once again cut off the tops of them sanded them smooth and then stained them with my Dixie Belle voodoo stain Once they were completely dry, then I dry brushed with some white Waverly chalk paint all the way around both of them. Next, I'm going to take this transfer once again from Amazon. I'm going to cut it away from the other transfers. And then I wasn't really too sure which farm animals that I wanted to transfer, but I ultimately decided to do the farm fresh with the egg and the eggs at the top of the animals right in the middle of the circle. Um, this time I got smart and stirred my white paste. I also made sure to push down my transfer really well so that it did didn't bleed and then transferred on the chicken to one of them. 
I peel it back and I'm like, yes, it didn't bleed. I was so, so happy. And then I transferred on the pig to the middle of the second one. Now I did not want the chicken to transfer on again. So I did just add a piece of painter's tape. Oh, I did add a piece of painter's tape to the bottom of the chicken to make sure I didn't transfer on the pig. And then I added the painter's tape behind the chicken on the second one to make sure that the chicken didn't transfer and then transferred on my little piggy and then i pull him back and look how stinking cute this turned out and then i took away the painter's tape i dried both of them and then i took a square block a mini square block from dollar tree i cut that in half with my miter shears and glued that to the back of the circle and then glued the circle down to the middle of the houses so that this had kind of like a 3d effect I then grab my little crate decor and I'm going to hot glue my houses to the top on an angle kind of like in a V shape now you can totally stop here and keep it as is but I just felt that it was missing a pop of color so I did take the greenery that I have from Walmart I pulled a few of the greenery pieces off of the pick and I glued that down right into the middle to give it a little bit more detail again if you don't like this you can totally keep it out but I'm curious to hear would you guys keep the greenery or would you have left it as is and that was it for this project you guys I absolutely love the way that this turned out I cannot wait to hear which was your favorite project down in the comment section below all of these were super easy to put together I don't believe that it takes a whole whole lot of skill to do it so if you guys are a little bit nervous to do DIY if you're new to DIY I would definitely encourage you to try one of these projects because guess what you'll never know unless you can do it you'll never know <laughs> Oh God, it's getting late. You'll never know if you can do it unless you try. Don't forget to leave a chicken emoji down in the comments to let me know that you guys are still here. I also want to just thank you and tell you how much I love and appreciate each and every one of you for being here, for making what I do possible. None of this is possible without you. And I just want you to know I'll never forget where I came from and I will never take it for granted. With that being said, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning you are worthy you are gorgeous and too coming from a heroin addict who is nine years sober oh my god that sounds crazy to say nine years sober you guys and I'm just so appreciative and if I can do it I know that you can do it as well thank you for being here also I just recently lost 80 pounds of pure fat and have the best energy focus and mood of my entire life and I make a sizable income doing it helping people sharing my story learning to grow on social media and build a brand on social media so if you guys want to learn how to build a brand on social media and how to market yourselves text my number the word biz on the screen or if you guys just want any ketone information on how I lost the weight or how you can get better energy focus and mood text my number on the screen again I want you guys to know I love and appreciate you so much until next time bye check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right